is Veronica Whitley. I'm a Homeworks by Precept consultant here in Texas, and I've been a homeschool mom to my four kids for 10 years. This past year, we've had such a great time in kindergarten that I wanted to take a minute and take you on a little tour of K-5 math. Now, this is the third edition of our K-5 math program. There is a fourth edition available in the catalog, but these books are the ones that correspond with our DVD and online video courses, and these would be the ones that you would get if you chose to do a parent-led textbook kit. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to some new friends. Kindergarten math has a farm theme, so I would like for you to meet Farmer and Mrs. Brown and their little pal Cheddar. Throughout the year, you will follow Farmer and Mrs. Brown and Cheddar as they go about their lives on their little farm off of Kindergarten Lane in Mathville. Now these characters are used to help make the math lessons enjoyable. And the fun stories will create interest and introduce new concepts for your child. And you'll also notice that they help to introduce and reinforce some of the Bible action truths and Bible promises throughout the lessons. Let's start by taking a look at the K-5 Math Teachers Edition. There's so much great information in here, and this book really is going to be the core and foundation of your teaching. K-5 Math is broken into 160 lessons spread over 22 chapters. So let's take a look inside. As we open the teacher's edition, you'll see the table of contents. The chapter numbers are color-coded to match the bands of color on the edges of the pages in the teacher's edition, as well as the top corners in the student work text. For me, when I'm teaching four different students in four different grade levels, this is very helpful in making sure that my kindergartner and I are on the same page. Next, the lesson objectives. These pages give you an overview of what's covered in each chapter. In the first column, you'll see the lesson number, the teacher's edition page, the pages in your work text, and then these columns show you the objectives of each lesson. This last column is my favorite, Bible truths. Of course, one of the goals of K-5 math is to teach children to understand math and become problem solvers. But the second goal is to help them develop a Christian worldview. And this is exactly how they do it. In this column, you'll see which Bible truths will be addressed in each chapter. You'll find a more detailed list and description in the appendix at the back of the book. There's a listing of the Bible action truths, as well as a list of Bible promises. These are principles, truths, and character qualities that you'll want to point out and discuss with your child throughout each lesson. At the beginning of each chapter, you'll find a more detailed lesson plan. This gives you the lesson numbers and the titles of each lesson. Then under materials to gather, you'll find items that you can collect from around your house, maybe in the kitchen, the garage, or something that you can pick up on a quick trip to the grocery store. Materials to prepare call for items from the teacher's visual packet, the student manipulatives packet, the appendix, or the teacher's toolkit CD. This CD can be found on the back cover of the teacher's edition, and in addition to printables and reproducible pages, this CD also has smaller printable versions of the charts, illustrations, and manipulatives from the teacher's visual packet. Next is a section titled, A Little Extra Help. You can find these at the beginning of some of the chapters in K-5 math. This section is designed to help students who may be struggling with certain concepts presented in the chapter. It might suggest games, hands-on activities, visual aids, or even alternate teaching strategies. At the beginning of other chapters, it'll simply be a recommendation or example of a bulletin board. Now, these bulletin boards also include interactive math ideas. And while I don't have room in my house for a dedicated math bulletin board, you could easily modify some of the ideas on these pages using a poster board or trifold board and still have a great resource for your kids. So that's the beginning of a chapter. Let's actually look at a lesson. Each lesson is broken up into several sections. In this first section, you'll see the lesson number and then the work text pages that your student will be working on. You've also got a list of objectives and teacher and student materials, and then a section with some notes or tips for you as the teacher. I like to read over this section the night before and make sure that I've pulled together any manipulatives or visual aids or printed off any extra worksheets that we'll need the next day. The practice and review section gives you opportunities to practice concepts like writing or number recognition, or to reteach 
concepts or skills that maybe your child has forgotten or is struggling with. And it's just a great opportunity to review previous lessons, chapters, and skills. This next section is titled Introduce the Lesson. It may be a story about Farmer Brown, Mrs. Brown, or Cheddar, or maybe it'll be a poem, a riddle, or a question to get them thinking about the upcoming lesson. Or it might be a biblical account or a story about a biblical principle. Teach for Understanding. This is the section where you will begin to teach and explain the new concepts. While it isn't a script, I found that these questions and suggested answers are very helpful in teaching my children who have very different learning styles from me and from each other. These questions really encourage interactive learning and help encourage their understanding as we work through the process of learning new concepts and solving problems together. It also promotes critical thinking as they begin to see not just that these facts can be memorized, but also that there is a reason why the answers are what they are. This is also where your manipulatives will come into play and you'll be able to utilize this section is also where your manipulatives will come into play. This is where your child will be able to get their hands on the problem itself. They can move around place values, count or group numbers, take away items, change the time on the arms of a clock, and really use all of their senses to understand and solve the problems. Up here, you'll see smaller versions of your child's work text pages. They also serve as your answer key and it helps as you read and guide the completion of each page for you to have your own copy and be on the same page as your child. At the end of some of the lessons, you'll see a section titled Extended Activity. These are optional lessons and activities that can be used for enrichment and practice to help reinforce the concepts taught in that lesson. And then lastly, let's look at the appendix. In addition to the Bible action truths, and Bible promises, there are some really helpful resources in this section. First is the manipulative alternatives. If you don't have the student manipulatives packet, this section offers some ideas for creating your own. It also offers some ideas for managing and storing your manipulatives. This page shows you the precursive number strokes and even gives you the descriptions for how to instruct your children in making the numbers correctly. There's also a list of several fun songs that go along with the math lessons. Some of these will be familiar and some of them might be brand new to you. And then there's a section of reproducibles. These are pages that you can make copies of and use with different lessons. There's a number book as they practice writing and learning their numbers and then different pages that go along with each of the lessons. And the lesson that it corresponds with is noted in the bottom of the page. Lastly, you'll see a section titled Math Background for the Teacher. I really suggest reading this before you start planning for your year. This gives you a clear understanding of the terms, objectives, and really the big picture of BJU Press Math. Next is the student work text. As you open up the cover of the K-5 math work text, one of the things you'll probably notice is that the spine of the cover is not attached to the pages. This was done intentionally to make it easier to remove the pages. I generally leave our books intact throughout the year without too much problem, but just know that if you wanted to take them apart or take out pages, they've made it very easy to do so. Again, we have the table of contents, and you'll see the same color-coded chapter numbers as you did in the teacher's edition. These colors correspond to the corner or the edges of the pages, and just make it very easy to quickly glance and make sure that my child and I are both working from the same page. I love how colorful the work text pages are. Each lesson has two pages, front and back. It's a good amount of work, for practicing new skills without being overwhelming. And each lesson offers daily opportunities for review. In addition to the daily review sections, each chapter ends with a review lesson. 
In grades one through six, these reviews might be used as an opportunity to study for an upcoming chapter test. But since there are no tests in K-5, if you need to calculate a numerical grade for your child, you could use these pages in place of a chapter test. I realize that as homeschool moms, we do math at home all the time, but this section down here titled Math in the Home offers some great ideas for creative ways to incorporate and reinforce the lessons into other parts of your daily routines. This page is called Cheddar's Checkup. This section is a cumulative review that will include material from the previous lessons as well as the previous chapters. Lastly, let's look at the student manipulatives packet. This is a key component of the BJU Press Math program. One of the things I want to do is show you what's inside and then show you how I organize and store all of the manipulatives so that they're ready for us throughout the year. The student manipulatives packet contains work mats, characters, geometric shapes, counters, and money for your child to use in their lessons. There are also number cards, dot cards, rulers, math symbols, and a clock. Okay, I have moved and taken over my kids' um, desk area. They are done with school, so um, I've got a little more room to work with. And um, we're going to put together uh, the student manipulatives packet. Actually, we're going to take it apart, and I'm going to show you how I organize it and um, store it for um, easy access all year. So first of all, I like to store our manipulatives in plain white three ring binders. I organize just about everything in my house using these binders. The one inch size works really well. I just label the spine and then um, I like to put the cover of the manipulatives packet in the front and um, I can pull them out um, all together and pull out what my kids need. In terms of organizing the manipulatives, page protectors are a great thing for the work mats and um, different sizes of zip top bags. I use the snack size, the sandwich size, and the quart size um, to hold all of the little pieces. And then I put all of those into a binder pocket. It is three hole punched, expandable, and closes with Velcro. Um, and that just keeps all of the little pieces together. So here is my K-5 math student manipulatives packet. Um, I've got the cover here in the front and then I've labeled the spine as well so that when it's sitting with all of the other school books, it's easy to see and grab. And then inside I have the work mats in page protectors um, to protect from sticky fingers, accidental pencil marks, uh, crayons, things like that. Um, but you can slide them out if you want to. Um, I just open up the, the rings and hand them to my child like this. And then we have our characters. Um, after I punch them out, I tape a craft stick to the back and make little stick puppets. And we use these for all of the stories in the different lessons. So we'll put Cheddar back in there. And then I have our rulers. And this is our Farmer Brown clock. Um, we've added a paper fastener and punched out his arms so that we can change the time. So he goes right in here. And then here's my binder pocket. And this is where I keep our counters, um, our number kit, which is our number cards, our dot cards, and our sign cards. This is my shape kit. I've got all the individual shapes sorted by an individual bag. So we've got our triangles, our squares, rectangles, circles, everything is labeled. It goes in there. And then I also have our money. Um, I separate them by types of coins so that um, if we just need pennies, I can just grab the penny bag. If we need all of them, I just grab the big money bag. So we'll slide those in there and close that up. And then I just like to keep all of these right here.
And again, this is clear, so it's easy to see what's in there. It opens up easily, so I know what everything is. I'll close that up, and there is my K5 Math Student Manipulatives Packet.